Yeah. So you were there for part of our trip, but not the whole thing. Mm. And the day you missed was Sunday. So Sunday morning, we went to a church. It was actually Pastor M, I'll call him. It was his home church. It was his home village is where we went. So it was really cool. We spent a, whole, a week with this guy and he took us basically back home. Mm -hmm. And we saw where his brother, I'm trying to think the pastor there, I think was relative of his as well. And so we had a meal in the pastor's home, which was pretty much your West African meal. Yes. It was really That's good. wonderful. Yeah. Um, but while we were there, so we got there and the people were standing outside. Church had already started and church inside was full. And the, the reason people were outside is because it was full. Mm -hmm. And it was a, it was a really a blessing to be there and to observe their entire service. So when we were done, uh, they had asked me to preach, and so I did. And when we were all said and done, um, they handed out the Bibles to the people that were sitting in the church. And it was not chaotic. Everybody stayed sitting, and they handed them out. And then they said, we have some more, and you can have one if you can read. And so they were at the back of the church. Mm -hmm. uh, Pastor D was standing back there with a Bible and checking them if they could read. And I got some footage of it. He's back there. He's like, <laughs> read this. And he pushed one kid out of the way and got the next one. He read, all right. And he was doing that back, you know, they were, they were handing them out that way. Hmm. And it was actually, to me, it was like, well, I'm sure the Bible will get somewhere, you know. At one point I was hmm. a Gideon. So that for them, you know, that Bible goes, even if it lands in the trash, it's good, you know, somebody hmm. will get it. Hmm. And so, but they, they handed them out that way. But anyway, what I was going after is when it was all said and done, the pastor said, I want to thank you for coming. He said, now my whole church has a Bible. Hmm. I was like, wow. And while I was preaching, I didn't bother reading in English. Um, pastor M did. He, he read it and he didn't read it in English. He read it in Creole in their language. And I was able to watch where the Bibles were. They had a deep reverence for the Bible. Mm -hmm. So they stood while we read and things like that. And you could see where the Bibles were. Every Bible had about three heads to it. And I would say wow. 10 to 20% of the congregation had a Bible. But you could tell where they weren't because they were all looking up and they were mm -hmm. paying attention. And just to know then, after we left, everybody can have one wow. next Sunday. So that was a that was a blessing. That was something that'll stick mm. with me after that trip. And maybe that's that's a piece that we really want to um, leave with the listeners is just what a blessing it is that each of us have. Mm -hmm. I mean, at least viewers here in America, and I'm guessing most most of the viewers here that see this uh, or listeners, we all have our own Bible. Yeah. I mean, just like it, it's not something we really think about. Um, whereas in a place like that, I, wow, that would be a real challenge if 80% of your church didn't even have their own copy. Like that, that would be hard, you know? Yeah, and as a pastor, I would struggle with that because mm -hmm. when I'm preaching, I want you to follow. I want you to yeah. know what's going on. And I want you to point out if, wait a minute, you, you got a problem here. <laughs> you know, I want you to be able to study it yourself. And mm -hmm. I just don't know how you would function like that. Yeah. And we have a, a quote in one of the videos that we took uh, where Pastor M saying, yeah, they do. They do preach without, pastors preach without a Bible. Pastors wow. are leading congregations without a copy of the word. Mm -hmm. That's scary. Mm -hmm.